Hi, everyone. Welcome to our final speaker of the 2021 Spring Lecture Series. My name is Arlene Mejorado. I'm a first year student in the Visual Arts MFA program here at UCSD. Um, so the University of California uh, San Diego Visual Arts Department is excited to have um, artist Patrick Martinez with us here today. Um, and uh, this lecture is also uh, part of the Art of Change uh, series that we are doing. So Patrick Martinez uh, maintains a diverse practice that includes uh, mixed media, landscape, paintings, neon sign pieces, cake paintings, and also his uh, peachy series of appropriative works. The landscape paintings are abstractions composed of Los Angeles surfaces uh, uh, and content using uh, neon sign elements and other recognizable materials. So these works serve to evoke place and socioeconomic position and further unearthed sites of personal, civic, and cultural loss. Patrick's neon sign works are fabricated to mere street level commercial signage, but are remixed to present words and phrases drawn from literary and oratorical sources. His acrylics on panel, cake paintings, memori memorialized leaders, activists, and thinkers. And the Peachy series documents the threats posed to black and brown youth by law enforcement. Uh, Patrick's work's been exhibited at the Charlie James Gallery, the Vincent Price Museum, the Studio Museum in Harlem, and uh, there is a forthcoming solo exhibition at the Tucson Museum of Art. Uh, his work is part of the permanent collection at the LACMA and the Smithsonian. Martinez earned a bachelor's in fine arts from Art Center College of Design in 2005 and is currently represented by Charlie James Gallery in LA. Um, this year he was awarded the Rauschenberg Residency. So um, Martinez is gonna share some of his work and practice with us. And um, it'll be followed by a Q and A led by fellow artist and MFA candidate, uh, Mir Sadiq. So please drop your questions in the comment section and uh, we'll all engage at the end of the talk. So uh, with further ado, I'd like to introduce Patrick Martinez. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm gonna get into my presentation and what I wanted to um, kind of um, talk about is just kind of like the general um, kind of uh, what I'm kind of informed by, what I'm inspired by, um, what informs my work. Uh, I take a lot of images, I sketch um, and, and uh, write down um, ideas and kind of observations. But uh, I'll share the images now. I wanted to share my, um, was it my keynote uh, presentation. Let's see. So um, I'm inspired by and informed by the city um, that I've been in my whole life. Um, a lot of the, you know, all, the, the vocabulary comes from, from just like, you know, um, observation and, or just um, driving around, walking around, biking around things like that. Um, a lot of um, questions that I get about like, who am I inspired by in terms of like uh, other artists or peers, things like that. I am inspired by the energy of artists and what they create and what they have to say. I don't really necessarily that know that I'm informed by any artists really specifically, maybe in the past and when I was um, kind of uh, making art, um, you know, in my teenage years, things like that. But, um, I kind of uh, kind of informed by the city and but more, more or less I, 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 I kind of just uh, let things happen in terms of what kind of comes forth and what I'm interested in it's a natural curiosity and um, it's just more that I'm inspired and informed by um, what the land provides if that makes sense and that's just you know 
taking my time. Sometimes it comes in and out. Like, you know, there, there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of things that I write down or things that I take photos of. Sometimes I'll be working on a piece and, um, you know, I just give it some time to breathe and then I run into color, um, inspiration in the city or material inspiration in the city. Um, a lot of what I'm showing you now is um, things that I'm using in my work. So um, I started using a lot of this stuff based on um, the exploration like early on. Um, it was just more about, um, I think uh, it, when I started doing like the sculptural paintings, it was thinking about boss relief sculpture, um, protruding out of the painting and what, what that can look like. Um, I was thinking about sculpture, like neon coming out of a painting and ceramics and tarps and things like that, like things that kind of like come off the surface. So I started, you know, I was always looking at the city, security bars, new kinds of sculpture for these pieces. And, um, you know, just kind of evolved into a lot of this, uh, what I'm showing you is the, the inspiration. So everything that I'm showing you, just um, this here is like a, uh, available for rent um, sign. I use these tarps in my pieces. Some, you know, sometimes I take them, if it's a small business, I'll buy them off of them. Um, but I'm also interested in this buying and selling of land, the changing landscape, the landscape that was once there and it's not there anymore. And I'm not interested more like in documenting it like photojournalism, but more like the feeling of. So a lot of these landscape pieces are four or five different places in one or uh, you know memory kind of ideas of, of, of a place uh, that I'm taking you know an idea of it like memory plus photo plus you know um, maybe something I make up. I'm looking at now vocabulary here in neon stuff that's already available for me to use. Um, the Palm tree was something I started using in the work uh, years ago, thinking about landscape and atmosphere perspective, things like that, how to bring things forward, how to set things back. Um, textures, um, does, you know, graphic um, kind of elements in the city that are already existing. Um, I'm interested in um, advertising, but on the level of like, you know, community advertising, mom and pop shops and, um, you know, uh, banners that are kind of uh, photoshopped by uh, the local uh, merchant. Um, textures um, and or combinations of um, hard and soft. This, this here is in um, the flower district and it's, um, you know, kind of a memorial kind of bouquet um, advertised. They, you know, they want the passerby to see that they have these kinds of flowers in their shop. So they put it on the wall and it was, it was interested in to see that, like it was a street memorial, but um, you know, you, there, there's situations where you find uh, some of these um, street memorials with the flowers and the candles all over uh, Los Angeles. So that's kind of what um, you'll see later on in the paintings, they make ceramic roses, and, you know, paste them as indications of, you know, trauma and hurt um, on some of the pieces. Um, local um, stores um, using some of the um, the banner tarps that they already have. I, I like the uh, banner on the left because it had palm trees in it, the inflatable, and then um, the rose and other elements that I use in different paintings. Um, and some of the already existing uh, signage that you might see in the city, fortune teller. Um, this is in El Serino's how uh, property is divided in color. Um, I was interested in that. This is uh, near a friend's place in Boyle Heights. Um, it's a cake painting that doesn't exist anymore, um, but I was interested in, uh, you know, like uh, how graffiti gets trapped in the painting because, you know, the person, you know, painting over the graffiti doesn't want to harm the painting or doesn't want to, do the painting any kind of damage. So there's graffiti trapped in the middle of the top cake and the style of painting is kind of, it was very interesting to me too. So I'm trying to find different uh, 
you know, I'm just interested in um, the way people kind of communicate. Um, so that's what I like about that. Um, same thing here. Vocabulary around the city, some Polo Heights, right by the Sixth Street Bridge. Was, I don't know if it's still there anymore. Um, this is in Frogtown, um, you know, uh, murals that have kind of been left to kind of, uh, you know, be eaten away by the sun or time. It's a close up. Um, these, these, um, I think like, you know, when I make the landscape paintings and the pieces, um, anything's kind of up for grabs and, you know, even like the new landscape and people presenting their homes in a certain way or trying to sell land, um, there's these fences that come up and they're kind of like, I don't know, an indicator of like, um, almost like a new kind of like, uh, owner or new person living there or. I don't know, it's just kind of a new kind of vocabulary that I put in some of my work as well. Um, you know, there are barriers, walls, fences um, in a time of, uh, you know, during the time of like all that talk about wall, um, you know, walls and border and things like that. It was kind of interesting to me. So I just started like, you know, investigating that. Uh, this is an early example of kind of uh, the work that I was doing with ceramics and um, stucco surfaces that you might find in homes or businesses. Um, it, they're all kind of handmade um, ceramics. Um, adhered to a panel that's painted with stucco and then, you know, lots of uh, layering over it. Um, I think the second slide I showed you guys was like this uh, available for rent um, um, banner tarp. So this is a, the usage of it, taking that and wrapping it on the panel and just kind of thinking of a canvas that's uh, rabbit skin glued to panel back in the day, or some people still do it. I was thinking about uh, banner tarp and advertisements as canvas. So um, in this you know, presentation, it's more like you know, um, using it as canvas and then um, deconstructing it and using um, you know, what's behind it putting things on top of. And, um, you know, this is a Bor uh, painting of Bor uh, Borgen Via, which is found in Los Angeles and throughout San Gabriel Valley. Um, this is a landscape uh, painting that I made that was um, kind of based on the neon, was based on like a liquor store signage, like Corona ads and like uh, maybe the Thai neon that you saw early on, like, but, but more kind of a, a LA, California, um, a sensibility, thinking about the beach, thinking about the, the 10 freeway with the white tile, um, banner tarps from around Lincoln Heights, auto body spot, um, wood tags. And, and, and I come from graffiti. I probably started doing graffiti when I was 11 years old. And um, I understand that culture and like, you know, I'm still friends with lots of um, the people in it. And um, I have friends that certain, live in certain neighborhoods. So I would have them tag their name if I'm thinking about a certain area or inspired by a certain area, or I would tag their name and kind of paint that out or, um, you know, so that's kind of what's going on with the graffiti marks. There is an, there's a better example of like the ceramic uh, roses that I'm making or flowers um, adhered to the, uh, the panel. Uh, here's another example. This is 2018. And it's just layering uh, stucco and painting it out. I use a pressure washer to kind of uh, extract or, you know, kind of scrape um, different surfaces from, uh, you know, from, from uh, the other layers. And I like to show that it's just in certain, um, I guess I'm thinking about time with all these pieces also. And I'm thinking about um, showing that, um, you know, with the changing landscape, the, the selling of land, the selling of um, uh, businesses and things like that. I'm, you know, thinking about like a piece of wood that's been there for a long time or like a tree and you cut it and then you sew the rings. This is kind of my version of that. 
Um, other things that I'm informed by, um, inspired by. Uh, PG folders probably popped up 1950s, probably earlier, but they're, they look different. Uh, this is kind of like the one people remember. Um, and I had them in middle school, high school, um, an authority and um, police misconduct, police murder, um, modern day um, lynchings by police. And this, this work uh, started for me in 2000, was it 2003? And then I made, I think it was an initial kind of um, drawing. And then I made a silkscreen print in 2000. Uh, actually, no, sorry, it started 2005. And I made the silk screen in 2007, 2008. Um, and this is the silk screen. The first one I did was an iteration of it. It would kind of look like this, but it was more general um, in that it was just a kid getting chased by a cop or harassed by a cop. And then um, fast forward, we have images of the people that are affected um, by authority figures and their misconduct. Um, so I'm starting to paint those people draw those people and it, it wasn't really more of a I wanted to make paintings not prints anymore because I wanted to paint those people into importance so um, this is an example of uh, it and Eric Gardner um, being choked by a detective um, Walter Scott running for his life when he was shot in the back and um, the first thing that prompted me to paint Eric Gardner with the, de uh, the detective on him, I noticed that he was uh, wearing a football jersey. The detective was not in uh, playing, he was in plain clothes. So he had some football jersey on and a hat. And um, that was like um, the scene of the football players or something and Walter Scott was running. And I was thinking about, um, you know, youth and authority, but also just what um, kids like updating that folder so that it's not some idealized version of America and what kids are really kind of uh, seeing on TV or learning in school or hearing about even. This is a painting that's I think 48 inches by 60 inches. I also turn them into folders, give them to youth, uh, high school and college. Um, this is an example of neon that I'm kind of a, uh, body work of neon that I'm still kind of uh, producing and, and exploring. So um, thinking about, um, I, like I said before, earlier on, like a signage that deals with advertising, but a, a more community aesthetic kind of um, feel, but also just um, community advertising, advertising to people that live in around the area. So it doesn't really have, really have anything to do with like the advertising we see on television or print advertising, things like that. But um, I was thinking about with, with Neon, it's very straightforward. And um, I was thinking about how to use certain, um, you know, there's not limit. I mean, there is limited colors, you know, and, and you know, what you're coming up with is kind of a design and um, almost a graphic. So I'm thinking about ways to um, complicate that sculpture or redact text in this sense, or this, this um, this example of equal is being not lit. So thinking about uh, neon signs that aren't working or not functioning, right? And, um, you know, um, so that it, it, um, it works to the, uh, the piece of um, art's uh, favor, redacting equal. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find um, new ways of using the medium. Um, this is in Inglewood. Uh, this is an example of the folder that I made from the painting. So just taking a painting and wanting to build bridges to um, youth and who I'm trying to get it to really, um, you know, um, it's important for me to try to get this work to uh, people. The reason I started making work and even if you want to tie it in with graffiti and like even before that, it was like about sharing, you know, and connecting with people and, um, that doesn't always happen in the gallery context, you know, it does, um, but, you know, not the way um, some would like it to. And for me, um, I like to build bridges to youth and um, young people and, um, you know, whoever wants to listen is just uh, that, it, that that's not necessarily, you know, like, I don't think this 
you know, these kids are like, you know, looking online to see what the next, you know, gallery show, my gallery show is. So I want to reach out to them and try to like give them a print or something like that. So this is uh, in Inglewood and this is a print that um, gave out. Um, this is in the Bronx when I was in New York. Sometimes I have prints on me, like a stack. And in this case, me and my brother were at Studio Museum and then we decided to go to, um, like it was during like, you know, probably school when school's getting out and we saw these kids and we started giving them out, so. This is in Florida, Orlando. Yeah. A close up of the uh, first run of folders that I made. I do different colors too and peachy folders come in different colors but not these colors so I kind of like made this kind of lost uh, or kind of lost color series you know uh, look on McDonald and um, you know Oscar Grant all these people painted so peachy fold so this is a uh, addition I did for the 25 years um, 25 year anniversary of the uprising in 92. Um, I was uh, 12 years old. So I would remember kind of all of it unfolding and also watching things burn as a kid. And um, it was an interesting time. I think about that time a lot, like not even just um, the uprising, but just like, the, you know, just kind of the energy during that time. Um, you know, uh, me and my friends, my brother, we were all listening to rap music and painting graffiti and you know my brother was running the streets and I always think back to this time like being very informed by this time and like uh, even politically it's just uh, the, the language in the music was, was very specific um, and understanding it at a very young age and understanding uh, the frustration and anger in it so um, yeah I mean during that time I was 12 and 13 my brother was 14 15 you know my brother was, we were, we were close and, you know, you know, we would hang out sometimes and my brother would, um, the reason I started doing the police, uh, youth and authority kind of uh, peachy folders is because of early, I knew that what was going on, like, you know, early on with like police harassing me, my brother, uh, my brother's friends. I mean, there was times where my brother was pulled over and the guns, you know, a gun was planted in you know, his friend's car, but someone saw, so then they let him go, all kinds of stuff. You know, that was in the 90s. So um, that's that's really what kind of like, I, you know, when I was in art school and stuff, they would kind of like scratch their heads, but that that's kind of what the motivation was. This is UCLA still. Another painting that's in uh, um, Smithsonian. Museum of uh, African American Art. Um, street vendor in the middle, um, Jordan Edwards. Um, that I'm using um, collage with the, the roses, but I'm thinking about stickers. Um, in, in some of the actual drawings that I draw on the peachy folders, I use stickers because we used to put stickers on the peachy folders. So I'm thinking about the, this being a big sticker, big stickers, using it as like a memorial kind of motif. Uh, this is Occidental College, um, a, a presentation. Philando Castro, Apollo Neo. Um, putting these things out into the world, it's um, interesting what you get back. This is uh, Apollo Neo's um, older sister and she, you know, there, there's a lot of emails that I get. I meet some of the families and things like that. And there's, it's, I, I'm always waiting for like some kind of negative response, but there's always been positive and they understand, I guess, um, you know, like they, 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 they want me to keep on doing it or they, they have good, you know, uh, nice things to say. So um, just showing you that kind of uh, that dynamic. Um, another example of neon, that I'm making rectangle with the text in it. I'm inspired by income tax, checks cash, uh, pawn shop, these things, but remixing the messaging to um, kind of capture the passerby. That was kind of the inspiration. Um, 2008, I started making these. And um, 
driving Whittier, uh, down Whittier Boulevard from my studio in downtown, going to my apartment in Montebello. These neons were always on, even at night mostly, is when they're more dramatic. And I always thought about them as sculpture, but then also light and dark, like uh, the black um, plastic being like this Caravaggio uh, black, you know, stark background contrasted with this light, the brightest light you could see. Um, and uh, they were advertising at night when people, you know, the businesses were closed. People were walking by maybe sometimes, but uh, cars were mostly driving by. And, um, yeah, so I just wanted to remix the messaging so it would read certain things. So thinking about putting it back in the context of, uh, you know, what it's inspired by. No, uh, this is just an example of how I'm like peeling away paint. I use a pressure washer, sorry. I use a pressure washer to kind of like uh, eat away at it. And I have other, uh, you know, processes on top of that, like I'll spray and uh, paint, paint on top of this. And uh, I, I like to do it when the sun's out because it things dry easy and then I can do more um, kind of layering on it. But uh, I'll, I'll work on like three to four pieces at once and just kind of like go at it. Um, that's kind of an example of the bottom you see there. It's like, uh, I just treated kind of the bottom of it, like ripping away the paint off the bottom. Um, and sometimes you're inspired by things that you see and how the, the wall is arranged. Um, and this is probably like a parking lot that I saw where the bottom of it was eaten away. Um, and, you know, um, using tile, ceramic tile, ceramic roses that I'm making by hand, but then also um, the security bars are here. Another example of neon that I'm using, uh, remixing the messaging. Um, earlier kind of landscape painting, Chinatown. Redacted text, States of America, neon. I always wanted these neons to look like you could just take them from uh, a gallery wall and then hang them in the liquor store or market or bodega or wherever. That's a newer painting using the layering and banner tarps. Um, with, these, with these paintings, I'm thinking about almost like a, creating a third space for myself and figuring out, I'm from like a mixed background. My mother was Filipino, my dad's Native American and Mexican. I'm thinking about all those things kind of combining, um, you know, the hybridity of like the central Mexican murals that I'm referencing and kind of like the hybridity of the style almost and even just like uh, the materials that I'm using. But I imagine that these um, Central Mexican um, murals that I'm referencing to be painted on the sides of markets, liquor stores, community centers, um, and then, you know, the community adding to them with graffiti or just the change of business paints them out. Not justice for all neon. Um, this is kind of how I arrange them in like uh, different uh, contexts. And th this, this is in a gallery context and um, it's all inspired and informed by like how they, I picture them seeing them driving down the street um, in different um, storefronts. So like the rhythm of like that uneven pavement of LA or, you know, the, the limited space that one might have for a window to, you know, to represent or, or advertise what they're trying to say, you know, squishing in um, these messages into one space. Um, this is a newer piece. It's more of a, uh, you know, speaking on the current landscape or the landscape that was more uh, pandemic, um, like more about the pan pandemic and also like the uh, uprising or the protests of last year. But um, I'm interested in 
um, the landscape, but I was thinking with this, um, I'm kind of referencing or speaking to um, new materials in the landscape, uh, the pressed wood on businesses protecting, um, you know, like uh, stores and affluent uh, communities. So this is like kind of the flip side of a lot of the, the other pieces that you've seen. Uh, this is I'm thinking about like, you know, luxury goods and things like that. Um, during the, the protests of last year, a lot of the news, the news media was saying like, oh, I can't believe the prop. They were always talking about property and they, could, they couldn't understand how that relates to, um, first, you know, like, you know, the injustices of, you know, the police murders and how people are frustrated. And um, I always thought about the bell hooks quote and um, there can be no love without justice. And, um, the frustration and anger in even specific, specific, like, you know, a lot of the youth um, that you see on TV, they were, they were um, frustrated. So this is kind of like, you know, he's based on that. Um, this is an uh, kind of ceramic piece, uh, ceramic or ball piece with uh, um, tile adhesive and painting, mural painting on the, you know, left and banner tarp and stucco, ceramic um, roses, also with spray paint. This one's, well, I think one of the bigger pieces that I made. That's a close up. So Charlie James Gallery, I think that was, was 2018, I believe. Another neon, Alice Walker. These cakes that I'm making, I think about uh, people that I want to paint into importance um, that I feel like have not been kind of like uh, celebrated. Um, and I think about different um, traditional cake, or not cake, but uh, traditional portrait painting and uh, who's painted and who's celebrated and who's remembered and who's, whoever kind of um, designs the idea of like who we get to celebrate. Um, so, um, you know, I was thinking about painting uh, people that feel, that I feel that are, you know, good people that have been discounted in um, American history. Um, and, you know, the gold uh, frame um, also kind of relates to um, like gold frames that you might see in um, traditional portraiture, like in, I don't know, National Portrait Gallery of old, older uh, white men with you know dark backgrounds, gold frame, thinking about things like that. And, uh, yeah, Zapatista, leader. Um, also here is just like you know painting with um, the paint and thinking about new ways on how to apply it, paint, heavy body acrylic and just traditional painting. Um, I think, you know, thinking about like the application of like Lucien Freud and also Wayne Tebow and how they're like taking uh, cake as almost sculpture or just kind of like a thick application wanting to build it up, but I'm just trying to find new ways of putting that together. Uh, this is uh, James Baldwin. Uh, same here, more. Um, Kind of ideas on application. The backgrounds are all airbrushed um, with like a almost fluorescent um, acrylic. And you know, um, these 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 portraitures are more you know celebratory. And we're speaking to that uh, you know community aesthetic of uh, getting this uh, cake at, at your uh, you know birthday and your your image or like your image of you when you were a little kid printed on the cake or you know there's like an edible ink that you can that's where it's kind of inspired by so Cesar Chavez it's another version this is this kind of has a, this is a, a newer piece that I did um still like using this is all panel and I just build up like a uh, the gesso on top to make it more sculptural and painterly and then paint the portrait first and then you know airbrush and then I build up the 
I use uh, cake frosters to put the heavy body acrylics on top. And then I, I, uh, the same roses that you see on the top left is kind of the same. I think I'm thinking about more cake um, decoration type of roses uh, when I make these, but they're ceramic roses on the top left. And um, yeah, um, it's just a process when I'm making these things. This is a uh, Frederick Douglass. Same thing, Nipsey Hussle. This one, I put like a flake in the paint for the back. I think it's like the background airbrush. It's like, you know, speaking to different, like speaking to uh, car culture and things like that. This is a, a painting that was in a National Portrait Gallery. Claudia um, uh, Patricia Gomez Gonzalez. I did this in 2017, I think, or 18. And the lost and found, like you're painting things and then painting them over and then extracting that painting again, like, you know, finding it again and, and, and um, presenting it like that. And, you know, almost like she was painted as a, a mural or a, you know, like painted as, as some kind of memorial. Uh, some examples of um, the LED you sign, you know, like I'm using LED now, thinking about storefronts and other uh, community advertising. I'm also using uh, family archive photos. LED signs, neon, ceramic, banner tarps, It's another example of the uh, uh, this is Albright Knox. This was earlier this year, which it actually came down. It's a neon kind of uh, collage, what I call them, but you know, the, kind of what I showed you earlier on. Um, getting back out, you know, to people and giving them work or making it accessible. Um, these are, um, you know, I, I thought of the neon signs, obviously as signs, but also thinking about uh, placing them um, during, you know, the uh, last election cycle, thinking about um, signage and, and wanting them to be able to you know, for people to display um, different ideas and thoughts. So I thought to make a yard signs out of the neons that I made, you know, that I made. Uh, for scale, and it was a cool photo. <laughs> Open the dark, Rebecca Solnit. And that's it, that's all I have right now. Um, Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna transition into my studio and then we could do the Q&A there. So I'll, I'll log off and then I'll log back on and then uh, we could do some of the Q&A there. That way I can actually show you what I'm working on or if there's questions about materials or ideas, I can show you all that. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll log back on just now, so. Perfect. Can you hear me? Hey, all. Um, so, yeah. Um, if I could, uh, I guess we could start the Q&A if that's what we want to do. Yeah, perfect. Can you hear me, uh, Patrick? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for um, sharing your work. Um, so powerful, so thoughtful, and 
Um, so I'll start the Q&A uh, okay. with Anya. Uh, Anya asked um, to speak a little of the changing demographics of LA and the murals. Frogtown, for example, has changed drastically since mm -hmm. all you showed was painted. Um, you said um, Frogtown's murals are uh, changing drastically and what was the rest of it? I think what she's asking is just, can you speak to the changing demographics of LA? Oh yeah, I mean, um, it's it's a complicated thing, right? Cause you know, like for a lot of people that have been here the whole, you know, my, you know, kind of like their whole lives, they, they get, they definitely are kind of um, affected by it uh, more so because they have a, you know, have something to compare it to in terms of like rent costs and um, what it's turning into in terms of like, you know, one of, you know, it's one of the most expensive places in America. Um, so it's, 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 it's hard to compete with all these prices of like homes and things like that. But on top of that, it's just like to even just to, to live is another thing and um, having the right job or wh whatever, right? Like you have to be very ambitious to, um, to try to live here and, and, and um, you know, be able to take care of yourself. Um, but knowing what that economic kind of violence looks like, but and also kind of seeing what visually that it's turning into, it's uh, it's at times frustrating. But um, you know, everyone wants to be here, and um, I don't know. Histories um, get covered up, and um, communities get covered up, and it's it's a weird thing because it's like this thing that I move back and forth with. Like when I'm making the work, I have to. Um, these are things that I'm making, I'm painting and spending lots of time with and then covering them up and then wanting to extract them again, because that's what's, you know, kind of happening and, um, you know, making uh, the past present or, you know, extracting histories. Um, and that's all, you know, I think there's a lot of people out here doing work that can, um, that speak to that um, in different ways, not just only visual art, but um, so that, you know, other folks that are kind of coming in or that haven't been here a long time or just kind of changing the landscape are able to uh, understand where we're coming from or just even um, kind of move forward with some kind of uh, respect and authenticity and like kind of like maybe even like tapping the shoulder of someone that's been here. And I don't know, it's, it's a complicated situation, I think. Okay, and then did you want to take um, some time to give a studio tour? Oh, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Um, let me flip my camera around. So um, things that I'm working on, I, I, I'm working on these paintings here. Again, the Central Mexican kind of uh, murals that um, I'm kind of referencing, thinking about them being painted on, um, you know, sides of... Um, community centers or different parts of LA. In the early 2000s, I used to uh, assist um, LA streetscapers, Los East Los streetscapers um, in some of the mural painting. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they're kind of inspired by like different images and like kind of like histories. So I kind of like uh, took that as, I don't know, I took that as like kind of like a I, I took it and ran with it and, and, and started referencing other murals and uh, other sites of uh, Mexico, thinking about brown bodies from different times and placing them on current um, kind of, um, like I told you, like painting them or thinking about painting them on the side of markets or bodegas or wherever, you know, like uh, stores that you might see, community centers. But this um, here, I'm painting these to uh, print on tile. I've started printing on tile for this mural that I'm doing in Boyle Heights. So I kind of got inspired by that idea. So I'm gonna, I painted these just so that they can be printed on tile. And then I'm gonna add it to this. Um, I'm kind of like composing the tile now. And for me, this is like underpainting. So there might be other elements that I paint on there or tags or I'll paint. I'm thinking about doing another color on top of this and then washing it out. Um, but um, this is just kind of like the tile format. I'm thinking about, uh, I guess, combinations and collaging the tile from different areas. Um, so if you could picture this kind of combined, uh, this would be made into tile. And then 
it's something new for me. I'm still trying to figure it out. So I'll use the tile adhesive here and then uh, put it all around. In certain areas, I'll break the tile, something like that. So I just wanted to show you materials and then um, what I'm working on. Um, so that's like some of the materials I'm working on. And then saw that piece in the presentation. Um, there's depth in there. I mean, it's, it's a pretty heavy, thick piece. And it's kind of, it's more sculptural. This t-shirt, Dia's t-shirt, the glass is in there. Um, this is my space, some pieces that are, Finished, I'd like to wrap them because of the dust. Um, this is a pain, uh, painting that's with the uh, LED that's um, just finished. I, this is new because I painted the neon. I'm painting out areas, even the neon. With some of it, I scraped the neon off that. Um, Faded Warrior uh, kind of inspired this whole piece. And I thought about places in San Gabriel Valley that were just kind of like desolate and kind of bone dry color by the you know colored by the city just painted over and over graffiti you know and this is actually from this sgv you can find in montebello different part they did it as like a system of, on walls to uh, combat graffiti so you wouldn't tag on the walls because it would be i don't know hard to uh, read your name if you tag but i just put a little of that in there so i thought about saying valley um kind of see the texture in here Let's see, I'm here, this is my other room, my other painting room. A lot of materials on the floor, I'm really messy, a lot of spray paint. Um, I use a lot of uh, solid paint markers. These are from my teenage years. This is all like graffiti stuff, but it's all solid paint markers, like oil sticks and house paint. This is a uh, peachy folder. Oh, uh, painting, sorry, it's wrapped right now. Um, some more PT folder paintings there. This is my kiln. Fire all the ceramics in here. And my studio is in Huntington Park, so I'm kind of like in a cool little <clears throat> next to an auto body shop and kind of in a neighborhood. <clears throat> so some more materials. My place is always kind of a mess because I always got something going on and I'm always working on two to three pieces. This is a Boyle Heights mural tile. Um, things that I find, friends find things for me. I'm gonna use that in a painting. Uh, this is a new piece that I made for Freeze in New York and um, kind of dealing with, uh, you know, same ideas with uh, the ceramics and neon. Using a um, plush blanket. Thinking about these uh, vendors that have like the blankets out in the street, just uh, selling them um, against their car, against a fence, draping that on top of uh, uh, on the panel. Uh, so I was thinking about the serpent and the warrior, and kind of like how these uh, these the gang graffiti in LA is like you know, or even like graffiti like people um, crossing people out. It's almost like a snake, and I just, I found this tile too. It felt like a a serpent, thinking about the scales and the serpent, also like a Mayan jade in terms of tile. But yeah, that's like kind of my studio. It's just, uh, you know, like a, a bunch of materials around just making stuff and um, yeah. My, my office is there, that's what we're doing the interview or the uh, Zoom. Set this around. Perfect, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of comments uh, saying how much they appreciate you sharing your studio and uh, breaking the, the traditional way of a, a Zoom interview. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I felt like uh, maybe it's uh, less formal. Yeah. Okay, so another question is uh, from Sam. Sam is asking, when you make a piece, do you try to stay in the same theme? or with the same materials, or do you like to try to have every piece be different and unique? And then a second part is, do you use pieces uh, from fellow artists in your work? Um, I think that, I know, I guess what, I know what you're saying. I'm kind of all over the place, but right now I feel like I have something to say about 
these wall pieces and I have ideas about them. So I want to kind of like get them out. Um, but there's other ideas that pop up and that's why I work on two to three different pieces. Like the piece behind me was informed by, you know, the protest last year, but simultaneously, it took me a while to make it. So, but simultaneously I was working on a wall work. Um, one of these pieces here. So it, I'm like a ping pong ball. I just like bounce around from different things. And um, sometimes things need time to kind of develop, you know, just like uh, you need to live a little bit just to kind of feel like, oh, what, what is this missing? Maybe it's like it needs something. Um, and sometimes it's just time, you know, you need to see something to inspire the finish of something, uh, one of the pieces you're working on. But um, I don't really work like on bodies of work. Like I can't work on anything else. I have to work on this body. I'm all over the place. So like I said, this piece I work um, on behind me is like kind of the flip side of what I just, you know, all these other pieces that I'm working on. So it's the total opposite. And then on top of that, I'll draw on a peachy folder in the middle of all of it um, just because it's at home and I'm just, you know, thinking about it. And I, and I draw on the, you know, like on my desk or, you know, my kitchen table and, um, you know, I draw, I drew all those um, peachy folders on the actual peachy folders all on my kitchen table um, because it's just like, you know, ideas and thoughts that kind of flood you and then you, you just kind of work on that. And um, the second part of that question, I'm sorry. Uh, was, do you ever use uh, pieces from fellow artists in your work? Yeah. I mean, like in the work? Is that what you're kind of saying? That's what the question is. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I have other friends that are uh, graffiti writers that'll pop up and um, kind of uh, serendipitous. They, it's the kind of the community that I'm thinking about. And uh, I'll be like, oh, can you can you write here? You know, and they'll, they'll be like, yeah, yeah. So they'll catch a tag. My brother will write on my stuff. You know, I'll tell, you know, just be like, write in this color around this area. So it, in that sense, I'm, I'm working with artists that they might not know of or, you know, what I, I look in my eyes, you know, like in my perspective, is, is this is an artist and or, you know, someone that's um, added to different surfaces in L.A. Um, so I, I'm thinking about that. Um, and sometimes it does happen, but not really like collaboration with another visual artist. Um, you know, maybe sometime down the line. Okay, thank you. Um, Nicole Miller asks a question. Is there a connection with the idea or the act of consuming and consumption with the cake and the figures on them? Um, like the actual eating of like the, um, I don't know, not for me, but I mean, if you, if you want, I mean, that, that, that's, that could be, you know, something I never really investigated that it was more the celebratory aspect, um, celebrating these people and the community aesthetic, like everyone has a birthday. Everyone's like very, um, festive. I felt like, again, they're the flip side of these serious kind of like, or what I wanted to present was the flip side of these serious kind of uh, portraits that are, uh, you know, like just kind of uh, almost like painted into importance to feel like monuments or, you know, like, wow, this guy's very like, you know, important or, you know, this is just totally the, uh, the community version of that. That's, and then th I did want to paint them into importance and using like, you know, speaking to European easel painting, you know, and like rendering flesh and, you know, using that language, using their language and then representing it in a more festive way. So I don't know about consumption. It's more just, I guess, from my point of view, it was just more like the celebratory part of it. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question um, is asking if you have a favorite medium in which you're, you work in. Um, favorite medium, God, it just really depends. Sometimes like I, I'm getting busy and I'm, I'm painting a lot um, and it, it feels good. Um, but then sometimes I like painting large fields of color and then washing it out. Um, sometimes I like you know, putting tile adhesive on stucco surface. It's just, it just depends on that 
sometimes you get, you know, you just, you do too much of it. And that's why I'm in, I enjoy it because I'm able to jump around. Um, so I don't think I have one right now. I mean, there's always painting, but, um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes you can paint, um, too much. And then like, what helps me is me able, me, me being able to, uh, work with other materials. So I, uh, I admire, or I, I guess I, I cherish um, all those mediums equally because I'm able to, you know, jump around with them. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is from Jake. Uh, Jake is asking, do you think that you will ever move and create art that focuses on a different community? Like a community, hmm. I guess, like, is he, are they saying, like, or like, I guess, living in another place, maybe? I don't know. I mean, um, I, it's hard to say. I always find new things, like, every day, just kind of, like, like uh, being out and about or driving around in L.A. And I've never lived anywhere else, so I feel like, I guess I'm going to continue until I feel like um, I've said everything I've had to say with this. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know. Um, I have, diff, you know, other residency, you know, some residencies coming up that are in different places. So who knows? Okay. Um, Arlene is asking a question. Um, one of the books that you recommended us is uh, All About Love by Bell Hook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's asking, do you see your art as a hopeful expression, a practice of care or, compa uh, or compassion? Yeah, I do. And I, I think about that a lot, right? Because for me, like, I feel like I come from a lot of despair. I, I don't know, I don't want to sound too, like, dramatic about it, but, like, you know, growing up, I felt like I was very hopeless and just kind of, like, my friends and family around me, like, you know, like, my brother was in jail, prison for many years, um, not many years, but, you know, five years, four years, something like that. Um, moms had cancer, you know, like, just, like, a lot of despair, and it's, like, friends and family going to jail and and I just came out of that and you just come out of that just like knowing that like that's not how you want to live and um I don't know it's just kind of like a mindset uh, and then like unlearning a lot of the toxic things that come with like being a man in America or like being a brown man in America then like wanting to be hopeful and that's all like I'm trying to do you know it's just is is, is wanting to extend myself to try to be hopeful and just being tired of being like, uh, I'm, I guess I'm tired of just, you know, um, being hopeless and and knowing that there's strength in like being hopeful and, um, you know, extending yourself to others and um, showing people love, you know? Um, and I'm not trying to do that in like a corny, cheesy way. I'm trying to do it like, you know, I'm really trying to do the work myself and, and, and um, connect with people in, in a real way um, so it's a lot of those things and I'm still doing that work and still, um, working that out in some of the work that I'm making. So it's, it's, I guess I'm trying, you know, I'm trying, but not to try to do it like in a way that I'm preaching or anything like that. It's more just wanting, I mean, I'm doing the work for myself, so it's going to come out in the work. And, and I think that some of this needs to kind of show up and, and be out there right now. And even, you know, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, it needs to exist and I, I wanna make it, yeah. Okay, uh, so the next question is from Andrea. She's asking, what is the response from the neighborhood and what you're working, uh, I guess specifically murals? And do you feel they accept you more so than the big blue chip galleries that have been encroaching on black and brown neighborhoods? Like uh, the neighborhoods, like the communities here, like do they see my work or like the people that come from the communities looking at my work in the context of a gallery? Um, I think what they're asking is, let me read the question again. Okay. Do you feel that they accept you more so than the big blue chip galleries that have been encroaching on black and brown? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I guess the question is like- uh, like Go ahead. Oh, I guess I guess what I'm hearing is more like the predatory tactics that might, you know, like the some galleries will use to try to check boxes and show these works and 
pretend to be interested in them and they're just kind of like presenting, I guess. Um, I don't know, you know, like I, I try to be uh, a person that makes work and, you know, and, I, and I'm not trying to like, again, like where I'm from is like, I'm trying to connect with people and that's like a real thing, you know, like that's almost like the first, like the number one. And um, I don't know, like I, I guess at a younger age, I understood like, you know, um, I guess it's just about desire too. You know, a lot of these, you know, a lot of artists are, you know, like it's a weird kind of exchange right now, right? Like there might be those predatory tactics that are going on and some people want to be in that position, you know, to be in that slick gallery. And, but, you know, like, am I any realer or just, I guess, more accepted than they are? I don't know, you know, um, I think that I, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I think that um, I try to be honest about what I do and try to um, extend myself out to other uh, communities other than just the art community. And uh, that's the best I can do. And um, I don't know how that translates. Yeah, I think they uh, provided a little bit more clarity. Okay. They were saying the people that come from the communities like the Boyle Heights protests of galleries. Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, I think because when, when I did the mural for Boyle Heights, we talked to the community and I understand because I've been here a long time and I feel like I don't, I don't, I've been hit up to do lots of murals. This is my first public mural. And I just don't, you know, because I understand that, uh, you know, we get used as tools. Artists, will be, you get used to beautify a commercial space so that people get to, so I, I'm very um, sensitive about that. And I don't want to step on toes and I just say no to a lot of things. But the city of L.A. reached out to me. They said that they had the community of Boyle Heights on board because it's a good thing for the community. The, the building that they're building is a, a restorative care village. Um, it's built already. We're putting the murals on the sides of those things. And um, that's that's a plus. So in that case, I will do something for the community in that sense. So it's about picking and choosing and being present. If you're not present, I think it will show up and people will keep tabs on that stuff. And I, that's, that's my, that's my, um, that's my belief. So if it means taking a hit and not doing that project or not getting whatever the budget to do that, I, I'm, I'm fine with doing that. I've been doing it for, for 10 years, you know? So, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just going to continue to, be present in that sense, because, um, you know, if, if that's something that can help a certain community, then I'm going to do it. And I pay attention. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Paul. Uh, Paul is asking how you conceive of exhibitions, uh, how different pieces of work, how different kinds of pieces work together to form an exhibition's theme or message, or do exhibitions focus on a single form or body of work? I think the way I formulate, or, or I don't even know if I, saw, but I just make work. Um, and once you start putting up on, on the wall, then you start finding a common thread, you edit it, you go, oh, well, this is not cohesive with uh, well, really what I'm trying to say. The common thread, meaning like, you know, something that what, what you're, what it informs and inspires the work at that time, I think you could start to see, like if you work, um, like a year on, you know, a bunch of work. Not everything's going to fit in that exhibition, but you're going to find that common thread. And that's how I work. Um, I don't know if I really come up with the idea of a show, then you just start to make work. I don't really work that way. I think I work more organically and um, I let things um, kind of come to light um, and then try to figure out what that common thread is and, and uh, weave it um, together, sew it all together. Okay, and then uh, I'll ask a question. So in my work, I've um, been exploring uh, abstraction as of late. So okay. I'm wondering in your work, particularly the urban landscape paintings, what is your yeah. relationship to abstraction? Um, my relation, I, it's, 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 it's more of a observation and, and it, I call them landscape paintings because they're, they're inspired by the landscapes and like maybe surfaces that I might come across. And 
the abstraction is based on like things that I see, but also community kind of uh, participation, if that makes sense. So um, things that don't make sense in terms of a, a store owner or graffiti person from the city of Los Angeles painting out certain areas of a mural because there's graffiti on it, but they paint it with a different color or something that makes sense to them. And then I zoom in on that. I, I'm inspired by those kinds of like actions, I guess, you know, um, the taking away of paint, the addition of spray paint, the addition of uh, house paint. Um, these are all ideas I run through. I did run through different processes and the outcome is abstraction. It's like painting something that makes sense and then breaking it down or reducing it with um, certain parts of actions in the city that are happening, and um, they're very they're like they're they're very uh, abstract. Um, just because they're 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 done with a hand or like a process that someone you know like someone's trying to approach uh, touching up a mural that does have you know that doesn't is not really trained that way. It's going to look a certain way. Um, someone that's painting out graffiti that doesn't have the same color as the building or a stone or that has a pink or purple or blue space that has been sun kissed for many years. And then the, you know, someone tags on it, that's going to create a certain kind of um, abstraction. And that's kind of what I'm informed by is just the, the, that, that act, the physical, physical act, even watching people do it. Um, the choices that they make is, is, I guess, I guess where I'm coming from. Okay, thank you. Uh, Anya is asking another question. Um, mm -hmm. Saying the artists and the arts gets instrumentalized. How can we retain our agency in this transactional economy slash exchange? I don't, I mean, it's tough, right? Because you're, you're kind of in a situation where for me, like it's, it's, I'm still not yet arrived. I'm still learning myself. And I'm trying to navigate, right? Like I'm trying to navigate, like I'm asking questions when other galleries, uh, you know, from, a, you know, in Europe are asking, you know what I mean? Like what really drew you to my work or, you know, like having my gallery ask that because I really want to have a connection to, you know, like someone really wanting to show the work because they understand what it is. I think it's dealing with people that really understand the work. And I know that that sounds kind of like, um, you know, well, well, yeah, of course we want to do that, but it's, it's just, it's about paying great attention and who you're working with, who you surround yourself with in terms of like that transaction and that, you know, dealing with a gallery that has, you know, great setup, it's slick, it's beautiful, but maybe there might be on the trendy side. Don't, I don't, you know, there might be a more on the trendy side and they're about like just selling work. Don't, I don't think you can expect much of, I guess, like some kind of like longevity with them. It's just like paying attention, you know, like just, I guess, um, working with people that, uh, that are like-minded. Um, that doesn't mean always necessarily being with the biggest and best gallery. It's being with like uh, galleries that are gonna put you in the right light, talk about you correctly, present you correctly. Um, and then, like I said, I'm still learning. So as I move forward, I'm learning things. Um, but I, I, I don't know. For me, I just, I just do my thing, and I, and I, and I proceed with caution. I proceed slowly. I ask a lot of questions. Uh, protect your work, you know. Um, meaning that you know, just uh, you, you, you all have put many hours and sweat. Um, blood tears in it and just you know um think about all that you know when 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 opportunities come up and you don't know if you it's really a fit um it's it's okay to pass on certain things um it's just paying attention being careful with where you're placed and how someone what, what gallery talks about you and I, I don't know. It's some, some, these things that I think about. I don't know if it's re, you know it's something that's true, but uh, for me it is. It's something that I keep in mind and I think about. And um, yeah, it's it's a lot of things, and I'm still learning. The, the, the transaction part of it is always interesting to me. Um, I make things, and 
the fact that someone wants to possess it and own it is is interesting to me because you know you know i was 12 13 14 years old painting pieces on walls and that would be it you know it was never really about the transaction and not that i don't understand that it has to because i would love to get paid for it so it can continue to do it but it's just uh, the actual physical kind of um, owning of, a, of, of, of work is interesting. It's funny to me, but um, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's those things that I'm still learning. So it's to be determined. And I don't know what else I can say. Yeah. Anya um, has a follow-up comment saying, I see yes. a crisscrossing between the gallery system and a more community grounded practice. So I guess I'm thinking about institutions. Oh, okay. Institutions. Okay. Um, I, gallery and yeah community i try to live there institutions um i don't know like institutions like just like museums right and i i i think of them as you know like the starting point of me being young and entering these museums and and knowing that people can come see work and understand or try to connect with it and that's a good thing but I understand now as a 40 year old, you know, brown dude, like museums are, especially right now, trying to check boxes and, you know, show that they're uh, representing or, so it, it, it's a hard place to navigate. It's still, it's the same kind of uh, answer for me. It's like, it's a good thing to have uh, be included in the collection or in a museum, but, it just really depends on the institution and um, it's, it's like, you know, if, if, if they're really genuine about it, um, the reason they're, they're, you know, that they're collecting the work or whatever is, is, is going to um, come, it's going to come up when you have a discussion with them. And that happens sometimes with me. Um, I'm able to talk to a curator that's acquiring the work or, um, you know, um, in that, con you know, in that um, idea, then you're able to see why they want to place the work in the collection. Or uh, another part of it is being collections of people that are really wealthy, you know, that you probably have um, not a lot in common with. That's always weird, too. I don't know. Um, I don't even know if I can control that, you know. I guess I could, but then, you know, um, or, you know, uh, a giant bank that has a collection and they want to purchase, you know, some work or, you know, I don't know. We, we belong in those spaces, but you know, if, if you can't sleep at night and it, and it takes away from you, then it's something you should probably pass on. Thank you. Um, we have a question uh, from Chanel Stone. Uh, Chanel is saying that she notices flowers in many of your mixed media pieces. Um, she's asking, what's the symbolic nature of the use of flowers? Are the flowers speaking to the visual language of street memorials and, vi and vigils? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it, I present it um, in sporadic spurts to speak to uh, indications of hurt and trauma. I didn't know if I would really, I mean, I've done the wreaths and, you know, things like that, but that just really speaks to a certain type of memorial. I'm thinking more like bouquets of flowers sporadically kind of, um, you know, dispersed on a street corner, um, that hard and soft contrast. Um, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking about. Um, and um, the way I represent it is in kind of an abstract, abstracted way that kind of, I feel matches the application of some of the paint that I, you know, that's on the surface of the panel. Uh, and Arlene asked another good question, kind of, um, you know, tying into like, um, you know, being able to sleep at night. Um, she's asking, in the works that include depictions of scenes or moments of violence, how do you work through the decision to reveal and what to withhold um, information that is violent? How did you work through this particular, particularly with work that reaches black and brown youth? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough one, right? Because even in painting them, they're they're um, certain. Uh, there's certain uh, scenes that you um, that are hard to get through because you're like, 
it's it's taxing on your your um, mental health almost, you know. And I guess the way I kind of approach it is that this is the what I'm presenting is nothing new that you can't see on the television or the news. Um, but I try to pull back a little bit in terms of like the presentation. I think that the 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 context of me painting it on the folder, presenting it like it's a um, some type of like um, you know kind of like teaching kind of instrument, kind of pulls back a little bit from that. And um, but it's still it's still rough. I don't know. Like it's I paint a lot of portraits, you know, um, because I want them. You know, I wanted to memorialize and paint them into importance. The scenes. The first one I painted, you know, was Eric Garner. That was that was a that's that's a that's a you know traumatic scene. Um, but I guess what what kind of informs me is that maybe we shouldn't forget about that scene. Um, and and that's what I I think about moving forward is that when we paint things into importance, they're not they're not digested the same way as blogs or news or things that are just kind of like discarded after the day. Um, so, you know, thinking about um, memory and all that stuff is, is, is maybe the reason that I, I do paint some of those scenes. And that's how I, I guess I, 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 I approach it. Perfect. Uh, it doesn't look like there's, any more, oh, well, let me see. Okay, so he's just asking a question. Um, she's saying, I love how you said about creating a third space for yourself. Can you speak more about the third space and how you exist there? Type of conversation you have with your hybrid self? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely a conversation in applying the, the paint and the material, but it's also a conversation about um, it's why I started adding um, um, archive photos from my family, you know, like piecing together um, certain photos and then my like, kind of like, it's the conversation is interesting. The, the pink piece that I showed you that's on the wall, like uh, one of the characters that I painted, a warrior character from uh, Cacaxla that was, paints. it's in central Mexico, still exists in color look like my grandfather from my dad's side. So I put a photo of him in the window. Um, and, you know, like doing that, connecting those um, things and like creating that space for me and like being able to visually represent um, even like a lot of people, what they are, like kind of like a hybridity of things and in the combination of the collage or the, the painted collage that I'm creating or the neon and all that stuff, the experience of, uh, that speaks to today's, you know, kind of, exp you know, us, us living in today's um, world. And it's a therapeutic for me um, adding, um, I don't know, like, okay. So like painting, well, there's a piece that I have at my sale, right? Like painting um, a scene of the warrior, um, uh, a battle mural warriors in Kakaxla and then combining that um you know those brown bodies with like a a, a a painting or like you know like signage from my mom or my um my aunt's side or like my mom's side my aunt's from my mom's side they own a Filipino uh, market on temple in Filipino town like combining that signage on top of that you know it's it's very um therapeutic but also it creates new <clears throat> uh, worlds, I guess, combining these things for me. Like, it's, it's like, oh yeah, that's kind of what it feels like, or that's what it looks like. Or, um, so it also gives me um, space to operate, to not think logically about things, but just to combine things. And um, it's definitely, um, it's definitely something where, um, you know, like when I'm doing it, it's something, um, it's where I want to live. You know, it's, 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 um, I don't know. It's, 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 it's just, it's, it's, uh, it feeds my, um, my uh, soul. And it's, it's something that um, 
I'm still investigating, but it's about all those things, combining the com combination of all those things and feeling confident to operate and put those things, you know, put those things together that aren't really, you know, like, I guess, you know, our, my whole life uh, society has told me that not to put those things together and I'm doing it. And uh, the outcome is, is, is pleasing for me. Perfect, thank you. Um, this was amazing. Um, like I said, your work, um, the message, um, you know, the thoughtfulness, um, it's really appreciate it. So thank you for making time today. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, uh, I would like to thank the visual arts department for uh, inviting me to come and speak and uh, specifically uh, Paolo for uh, making this, this happen. So thank you, um, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> You as well. <laughs> you guys too. Thank you. Okay.